Good morning, everybody. Uh, once again, with map testing, we've got our lessons in a quite different format. Um, so we are getting back into math lessons, but it's just going to be, you know, this video separate from our normal time that we would be meeting together. We're going to continue bar models today uh, with two-step problems that, in, that have division. So we spent some time on two-step multiplication problems and then one-step division. Now it's two-step division. So it really, I don't think, should be any harder than the two-step multiplication. Um, with division problems, we know the total. We just don't necessarily know how many groups there are or how much each group is worth. So it's just different information, but the bar model looks the same. So we'll look at some examples, take some notes on those examples, and you will have some workbook pages. This is going to be a two-day lesson. So we will have also on Thursday a day of um, continuing to work through these two-step problems. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. Okay, as you can see here, says a baker has 28 ounces of flour. He uses eight ounces of it to make biscuits. You have a mental picture of that so far? Somebody has 28 ounces of flour all together. That should make you think that's the whole amount. He uses eight ounces, just a part of it, eight ounces to make biscuits. Now he packs the remaining flour into five equal bags. So eight of it is for biscuits, five bags for the rest of it. Now, this question gives us two different parts. Tells us already what we need to solve before we can figure out the final question. Now, first, we need to figure out how much flour is left. Again, he had 28 ounces, but eight ounces was for biscuits. Hopefully this is making you think of what kind of bar model problem this should be. It's going to be a part whole because we have a whole amount, 28 ounces, and he used eight of it. We're trying to figure out what's left. Down here, this bar model shows what that would look like. 28 ounces all together. Eight ounces is used for biscuits. This part remaining is going to tell us how much flour is left. Now, how would we figure out what's left if we had a whole amount and then we want to take away part of it, eight ounces, and see what's left? We subtract, that's right. 28 minus eight equals 20. So he had 20 ounces of flour left. Now back up to the top, we know that that 20 ounces of flour he puts in five equal bags. So 20 ounces altogether in five little equal bags, five groups. 20 ounces in five groups. This is what that would look like. We've got a part whole bar model. 20 is the total. Divide into five equal groups. We're dividing here. 20 divided by five is four. So that tells us that each bag has four ounces of flour. Okay. Really picture what's happening in these story problems to help you best. There are sometimes keywords that can tell us what we're going to do, but picturing what's happening is going to be the best way of solving these. Thinking of 28 ounces of flour. Picture this person having eight ounces for biscuits, and then think of, of what's left. Here we go with a new problem, and all have us. Just walk through the steps in this, and then we'll take out our notebook. It says, Joel buys three boxes of pencils. Each box contains 32 pencils. Now, the pencils are shared equally among four children. Let's stop for a second before we get to the final question. Thinking about what's happening here. Joel buys three boxes of pencils. Each box has 32 pencils. So there's a box with 32, another box with 32, three groups of 32, equal groups. Then the pencils are shared equally among four children. 
We've got all of those equal boxes of pencils. And then all together, it's shared between four people. How many pencils does each child get? Now, this doesn't tell us what part one is, but we can figure out what part one is. Before solving how many pencils everybody gets, we need to figure out the total number of pencils, right? Three boxes of pencils with 32. We've got to solve that part first. An answer sentence for that would be something like, Joel buys blank pencils. And to solve it, we've got equal groups, should, so that should make you think of a multiplication problem. Three groups of 32, or 32 times three. I'm gonna do 32 times three just on a whiteboard here. This is not one we have memorized. Some of you may be able to do this mentally, but for most of us, let's write it out. Two times three is six, right? Three times three is nine. So 96 tells us the number of pencils all together. 96 would be the answer here. Now, back up to the story problem, thinking about what's happening. Three boxes of 32 pencils, that's 96 all together. <coughs> How many does each child get if they're divided amongst four children? We just multiplied and now we're going to divide. So it's not always the case that it's addition and division or subtraction and multiplication, something like that. In this case, we're multiplying for the first step, and then we divide. We're dividing between four children. So 96 pencils divided by four is what we're going to do there. Let's take out our whiteboard again. Ninety-six divided by four. Now four goes into nine two times, because I know four times two is eight, and that's the closest thing we can get to nine without going over. I'm gonna see how much is left. We have one ten left. Bring down that six. How many fours are in sixteen? Exactly four. Four times four equals sixteen. We can see there's nothing remaining. So there, our answer is 24. And what is that 24 telling us again? It's telling us how many pencils each child gets. 96 pencils divided by four, 24. Each child gets 24 pencils. Okay, time for our next problem here. And we are gonna do this together in our notebook. It says Rodrigo buys three boxes of buttons. Each box contains 16 buttons. Let me picture this so far. Rodrigo has three boxes. That's making me think of equal groups, three equal groups. Each box has 16. So here's a group of 16, here's a group of 16, here's a group of 16. How many buttons, or sorry, he packs the buttons into bags of eight buttons each. So there's a whole amount of buttons, three equal groups. And then after you're done with those three equal groups, it's going to get divided into buttons, um, into bags with eight buttons each. How many bags of buttons does he have is our final question. To do that, we first have to figure out how many buttons there are all together. Let's write this out. I'm gonna start with a header at the top of my page. Today is not January, February the 3rd, 2021. This is math lesson 9.4. Right now, this we'll just call question one since it's the first question in our notes. 
And we'll say for part A, we're trying to solve for how many buttons Rodrigo has altogether. So the answer sentence is going to be Rodrigo has blank buttons. Okay. Rodrigo has blank buttons. That's our answer sentence. Now to solve for the first part, We know there's three boxes of buttons. Each box contains 16 buttons, three equal groups. Each one has 16, 16, 16, 16. As a bar model, that would look like this. We'll leave a couple spaces so that we've got plenty of space for our label at the top. We don't know how many buttons there are all together yet, so that's our question mark. But we do know there's three equal groups. And each group equals 16. This should make you think we are going to multiply because we know it's three groups of 16. Multiplication is finding equal groups. How many is there all together? That's the part we're looking for. Along the side, I'm gonna write out 16 times three. What is six times three? That's right, 18. I'm gonna regroup into the tens place. One times three is three, plus add that one. Our answer is 48. We'll write it in two spots, in the bar model itself and in the answer sentence. Pause it if you need more time with that. Then we'll move on to part B of the problem. And we know he's going to pack all of those buttons. How many? 48 buttons. 48 buttons are going to go into groups that will have eight in them. And we don't know how many groups yet, but we do know that each group is going to equal eight. And our final question is, how many bags of buttons does he have? It gave, it gave us a good answer sentence. We'll just use that one. He has, although I'll say Rodrigo has, blank bags of buttons. Now I'm gonna make mine a little different than this problem. I'm gonna make this model, I would say simpler. So we've got a partial bar model. We know that it's 48 buttons altogether. 48 tells us how many buttons there are in all. We know that there's eight in each group. We don't know how many groups there are. We don't know this part. 48. You know what, boys and girls, actually, I'm gonna change my mind just to make sure. That this does, I don't want it to look like um, this is a normal part whole bar model. So we'll put eight and eight, and then the question mark over the total. We don't know how many groups there are. We know each group equals eight. We don't know how many groups there are though. Now 48 divided by eight. Hopefully that makes you think, I've got a math fact to go with that. Eight times what equals 48? Six. We don't even have to write it as long division, we can just solve it. And the reason I know we have to divide is because we know the total and we know how many is in a single group. 
We would also divide if we had our total and we knew how many groups there were and we wanted to find out how much is in each group. Either way, we will divide. There are six groups all together. And we'll put the answer up here as well, six bags of buttons. And that's one example. Let's do one more example together. Here on page three, looks like we will not have to do two bar models. Instead, it's going to be a, a two-part bar model all in one. It says here that Jackie, Kim, and Mina have five, 55 stamps in all. Now, Jackie has twice as many stamps as Kim. I picture that three people, we know how much they have all together. And we know that Jackie has twice or two times as much as Kim. We don't know how many Jackie has, but it's two times what Kim has. Now, Mina has 10 stamps. How many stamps does Kim have? Okay, here is a bar model to show this. Basically, we know how much Mina has. We don't know how much Jackie and Kim have, but we do know their total all together with the three of them. So the first step of solving this is figuring out how much Jackie and Kim have. Right, because if we take minus 10 away from the total of 55, we'll see how much is left for Jackie and Kim. Let's write this in our notebook. This is 2A. Jackie and Kim have blank stamps. Now it doesn't necessarily matter if it's Jackie, Kim, Mina, Mina, Jackie, Kim, but I'll just do it in the order of the story problem. So I'll put a J for Jackie, a K for Kim, and an M for Mina. As you can see, I'll be close to running out of space. Feel free to start a new page if you'd like. Okay, now I don't know how much Jackie and Kim have. But I do know that Mina has a certain number of stamps. How many stamps does Mina have? 10, that's right. Or as you can see right here. So let's give Mina a bar model with just 10. Now Jackie and Kim, we don't know yet, but we do know something. We do know that Jackie has two times as many as Kim. Do you remember those bar models that we did? Times as many? That means we're going to have a single unit for Kim, and Jackie has two units. So Kim has one, Jackie has two. We don't know how much each of the units is yet, but we do know Jackie has two times as many units. So let's have Kim here, Jackie here. Jackie's the one who has two times as many. And I'm gonna put the question mark there. We don't know how much Jackie has. We do know also one other thing. We know that all together, all three have 55 stamps. Okay, so Mina has 10, Kim has something, we don't know. We don't know how much Jackie has either, but we do know it's going to be two times what this is. Altogether, it's 55. Now, how could we solve for how much just Jackie and Kim have? Just Jackie and Kim. We don't want Mina. We subtract, that's right, 55 minus 10 is going to tell us how much these two have. Let's subtract 55 minus 10 to equal 45. That's going to be 
how much Jackie and Kim have all together. We're gonna put that as the answer to the first part. And since I have a bracket over here, I'm gonna put a bracket over here to show just the two of them have 45. So all three have 55, these two have 45. Now that we've solved that part, we can solve for how much Kim has. That's our final question. How many stamps does Kim have? So I'll make an answer sentence first. Kim has blank stamps. Now, how could we solve with these three units that equal 45, 45 for these three? How could we solve for that? We know the total amount of all three units. And are they equal units? Yes. So 45 into three equal groups, what do we do? We divide, that's right, great job if you realize that. 45 divided by three is going to tell us how much each unit equals. Let's do it over here on the side. 45 divided by three, three goes into four. And let me kind of box this separate from this part. Three goes into four one time because three times one is three. That's the closest we can get. Still have one and five. Three goes into 15, five times exactly. Because I know three times five is 15. So 15 is our total. What is that 15 telling us? 45 divided by three groups is 15. So each group, each individual unit equals 15. Now Kim has just one of the groups, so we know she has 15 stamps. Kim has 15 stamps is our second answer. And I know that for probably some of you, you can do it along with me, but it gets a little tricky to do on your own. It's okay. I encourage you to process it like I have um, shown, where you're really picturing what's happening here. Draw out your model. Make it really a story. Don't just look for numbers, 55, 10. Make it a real story and picture yourself in that story. And that model, once you draw it out, should hopefully help you very much to solve it correctly. The pages that you'll do independently today are 173 Yes, yeah, so you should have done 169 to 172. Double check that I did have you complete those, but if that's what you should have done. Um, 173 to 175 is what um, you'll be doing for homework today. If I made a mistake and didn't assign these pages, then I'm sorry about that. We will work that in for practice eventually. 173 is a great example problem for you that's already solved. Okay which starts off with a subtraction, 56 minus 20 part whole model, and it ends with a division problem, 36 divided into equal groups. So that is an example done for you. On page 174, you have a partially filled out bar model. So, it says a fruit seller has 64 oranges in some bags, meaning we don't know how many bags. Now each bag has eight oranges. She sells the oranges eventually for $2 per bag. 
How much does she sell all the oranges for? Well, first we've got to figure out how many bags there are. How many bags of oranges? We know the total. We know how much is in each bag. What do we need to do? That's right, divide. You'll divide for this one, 64, into those eight groups. Once you find your answer, you'll be able to see how many total bags of oranges there are. If we know, uh, or sorry, how, many, uh, how much money she makes. You plug in how many bags of oranges there are, and each one is $2, so how much does she make altogether? Next qu question, it will tell you some information that you'll need to, um, actually, just a moment. Nope, sorry. I will not have you do this page 175 yet. Okay, so just slowly getting into it, this is the only page to do. And then Thursday, we'll do these problems. You could get a head start if you wanted to. Um, but I want to do a little bit more practice altogether before we get to that. So you can work ahead to do two and three if you want, but you don't have to. Okay, that is all for math today. Um, I know that the two-step problems can be a little tricky, um, but that is all for today. I'll talk to you later. Bye.